Welcome to the neighborhood Ford store Steelers Extra Point. Good afternoon everyone and welcome inside the KDK studios for this edition of the Extra Point following a Steelers really tough loss for them 16 14 to the Ravens another low scoring game is what you would expect in this rivalry and that's exactly what we got but the story of this game was missed opportunities good afternoon Bob Pompiani Chris Hope with you and we are going to be here until six o'clock we'll have post game analysis you're going to hear from Mike Tomlin and players plus we'll take your phone calls but Chris there are a lot of ways to go we can start with turnovers yeah. obviously those are big especially when they occurred but the run game defense once again this reminded me of the end of the Patriots game yeah when the Steelers just could not stop the run game in Baltimore pretty much even with no threat of a passing uh, offense with Anthony Brown in there the third string quarterback they just could not stop the ball the inside linebackers were being tortured all day long all day long and listen this is that became in the story now the second half of the season we're talking about how well the Steelers have done running the football but really the story is the Steelers can't stop the run when they need to remember last week against the Falcons the Falcons run the ball without fail in the second half of this game and made it a game. Now in this game, the Ravens take control of the line of scrimmage and push the ball down the field in the run game. 42 carries for 215 yards, 5.1 yards a carry, way below the line. And really when the Steelers knew they were gonna run the ball, they still couldn't stop it. Continually getting knocked off the ball, get, get, the Ravens getting a hat on a hat and the Steelers couldn't do anything about it. And J.K. Dobbins came back. He hadn't played in a while. Averaged eight yards a pop. There was a big sequence right at the beginning of this game, too. Three-nothing Baltimore. Steelers punting a 17-yard punt by Presley Harvin. Immediately a 44-yard run by Dobbins, followed by a one-yard run by Dobbins. And that was it. I mean, it's 10 nothing at that point. And the Steelers, I mean, look about the opportunities. They're in the, in, you know, the Baltimore 25-yard line three different times. Turnovers, a blocked field goal, those are all critical points in what turned out to be a three-point game. And the thing is, good football teams, when that happens, when you get a 17-yard punt and the ball bounces back into the Steelers' territory at the 48-yard line, good teams, good defenses stand up and get a stop there. Very first play, J.K. Dobbins takes it 44 yards, just a run in the, in the A-gap. Cam Hayward got double-teamed, got knocked out of the A-gap, and uh, Devin Bush just could not get off the block, got pushed out. Huge hole for J.K. Dobbins to run in, untouched until Mika took him out of, the, out, of the, out of bounds. And then the next play, again, four yards, two plays for 48 yards, a touchdown. That was a dagger. But the Steelers stayed into it. They fought and they fought, but that was a tough one to watch, this proud Steelers defense. And just before we go to uh, an interview here with Mike Tomlin after the game, I want to ask you about this because we cited the fact that they couldn't stop the Ravens on offense. So they just scored. The Steelers do five plays, 75 yards, Trubisky touchdown, yep. Pat Fryer. So at that point, it's 16 to 14. My question to you would be this. Okay, onside kick or kick it deep. I understand the logic of keeping it deep, but you got to believe they're going to stop them, and they yeah. showed no evidence of that. Would you have kicked the onside kick at that point? Take your chances well, there. Well, here's the thing. You give them the onside kick, and now they're going, and they can move the ball and score. So I think it was a damned if you do, damned if you don't situation, because if you onside kick, they recover it. They're almost in field goal range there. They, they could not stop that Ravens uh, running game. It was so physical. They were coming off the ball, and the Steelers, really, the, offensive line, the defensive line and the linebackers could not get off their blocks. That play there by Gus Edwards there when it was third and three, and he went for six yards, the Steelers had no answer for that. They ran that counter play over and over and over again, and the Steelers had no answer for it. We're going to take you inside the locker room right now. Mike Tomlin press conference following this three-point, two-point loss. Yeah, we're good. Man, a disappointing outcome, uh, but really nothing mystical about it. Um, we didn't do the things necessary to secure victory, um, particularly how these two teams come together and the nature of these matchups. You know, points are precious. Uh, we turned the ball over when we were in scoring territory a couple of times, uh, taking points off the board. Uh, we allowed a known legendary guy to, to block a kick. Um, he's probably the leading kick blocker, uh, active kick blocker in the NFL. Um, he skinned it in gap and blocked the kick, and then obviously uh, we couldn't get the, the needed stop um, at the at the weightiest moment on defense. And so um, you do those things, you you don't win, and uh, we understand that. And so um, you know we're we're disappointed. Disappointment comes with that. Um, from an injury standpoint, um, Kenny is is being evaluated for concussion. He's in the protocol. I think Wormley has a knee injury. Um, don't know the significance of that. Obviously, we'll have that uh, next time we come together. The rest are, are bumps and bruises associated with play. Questions? Thank you. 
what happened to Kenny was able to go back in the game and then could not go back in I think, you know, when he became symptomatic, um, he, he was pulled from the game and evaluated for a concussion. I don't know about the sequence or the details regarding the sequence. Mike, your run defense before the second half of Atlanta had been pretty good. Uh, what did you see that went wrong today? I just thought we wore down. Um, the power was falling forward. Did you feel like, especially with Brown in there, that, that they weren't really as much of a threat to pass then, that it was mostly going to be the run? Yeah, I think everybody knew that. Mike, what was Mitch able to do when he got in there? You can move the ball all the way up to the 25, and then those turnovers killed you. We just, you know, you just can't turn the ball over, um, particularly in the nature of this matchup. You know, usually the team that turns the ball over in the red area is the team that loses. You know, they've turned it over some in the red area in recent matchups, and we've won those games. We turned it over in the red area in this one, uh, and so we lost this one. Appreciate it. All right. Thanks, Mike. All right, that's Mike Tomlin following this loss at 16-14. It puts the Steelers at 5-8. and eight. And really, unrealistically, I, I think about playoffs. I know a lot of people coming into this thought, okay, you're in the hunt. But when you lose a game like this, and most importantly, the Steelers are 1-3 and three in their division. They're 2-7 and seven in the conference. So, essentially, you're going to lose just about every tiebreaker. Yeah, listen, we're, we can't say it's over when people say it's over. Right now, they're still in it, but it looks bleak right now. When you look at the 5-8 and eight record, they're last in the division and 12th in the conference. And, you know, like, like you said, Bob, 2-7 and seven in the conference in matchups and 1-3 and three in the division. And when it comes down to it, even if the Steelers won the next four games, ended up at 9-8, and eight, now you're hoping on other teams to lose games. And then when it comes down to if it's a tiebreaker, you are really up against the eight ball with tiebreakers. Two and seven in the conference, that's where they go to the division games first and the conference games. And the Steelers, it's an uphill battle when you're looking at those, those records in the division and conference. So we talked about the interceptions. There were three of them. Mitch Trubisky moved the ball until he got through the 25-yard line or yeah. so about Baltimore. Those are missed opportunities. The first one looked like there was – and I'm not one to try to – immediately put a blame because there are a lot of different components. It looked like Steven Sims was not yeah. in the right place. What was your take on that first one? Well, I, I think Steve Sims ran the round route. You had two guys that were crossing that came right into the same area, and he brought Roquan Smith into that area. He played off, read the eyes beautifully of Trubisky and came in and picked that ball off. Trubisky didn't even see him floating in with Sims, wasn't looking to his backside, and that was the pick. And so you can say Sims brought him in there. More film study will really help us understand what exactly happened. The other ones, I mean, really with Patrick Queen, when you look at that interception, it, it was just he, he did not see Patrick Queen playing again from the backside. And another bad throw there to, to Fryermuth. I mean, two bad interceptions inside the 23-yard line at the 17 and 23, respectively. That's taking points off the board, at least six points with routine the kicks by Bosley, I mean, that's, that's tough to swallow. Did you think uh, maybe he was staring down receivers? Because that's one thing that Mitch Trubisky seems to do sometimes. He will stare down a guy and allow a yeah. linebacker to drop back a little bit. I, I think, you know, he, he was looking him down. But really, the, uh, uh, to me, what I looked as film, I need to watch more. He did not see the backside mm -hmm. linebacker playing in and coming all into that zone. He just was totally blinded by looking one way. And I don't know if he was looking his receiver on the whole time. I want to look more film. But what he was not seeing was the backside and those linebackers looking for work coming from the opposite side. The other development here, of course, Kenny Pickett. Uh, and he was in the game, suffered a big hit by Roquan Smith. He avoided uh, Patrick Queen, and then Smith threw him down. Obviously, I thought it was his shoulder. At first, it was his head. They evaluated him in the blue tent for a concussion, came back in the game. One thing I'll say about concussions, uh, they're tricky. And quite frankly, you look for symptoms as well. And he was cleared, apparently, to get back in there, which is not unusual. Yeah. I've seen guys do that before. And then as soon as he developed a symptom, on the next drive, he was taken out. And, and obviously, that's a prudent thing to do when you sure. get to that point. But uh, that was a... I mean, Roquan Smith was all over the place today with an interception, also, you know, tackles, just a really big time playmaker for them. His first game in the Steeler Ravens rivalry. But I came out surprised today in this game because in the previous four weeks after the bye week, the Steelers have come out running the football, wanting to establish the run. Now, I understand the Ravens were good against the run, but the Steelers have shown over the last four weeks running for 157.8 yards a game. That's a lot. Right? And top five in the NFL over the last month, they came out and threw three pass plays in a row. And we've seen that the way to get Pickett going and to help him be successful is to run the ball, establish the run, and throw it. They came out first three plays, throw, throw, throw. He ran for the first down, the first one, and he got sacked. I mean, really, this was, and that was the sack when he got hurt. 
And I just want to see the Steelers establish the run, show that themselves and the opponent that we want to come out and be physical, and they didn't show that today in the first series. And that's one thing you can count on John Harbaugh's team. They do that all the time. Yeah. And, of course, it helps to have a guy like Lamar Jackson in there. But they do it regardless of who's in there with their running backs. I mean, they've used Justice Hill when he's there, Gus Edwards, J.K. Dobbins. They brought in Kenyon Drake. They yep. just run the ball, period. And you know it's coming. And we saw that. Mike Tomlin was asked about it after the game. Uh, you had Anthony Brown in there. No threat of a passing uh, offense at that point. Everyone knew it, and they still got it done. And I also thought last year, to your point about the Steelers doing it uh, from the start of this game, last week Atlanta was guilty of the same thing. They came out throwing. Yes. And they did not run. They ran the ball six times in the first half. Their You're identity. About the Falcons. Uh, yeah, the Falcons. The Falcons. Yeah. They, they, what is that? What I said? I thought I meant the rate. The Steelers. No, no. I mean Falcons last week. Throwing. I thought the Falcons went against what they should have been yes, doing because they're a good run. That's your strength, and they out outsmarted themselves. I thought. Absolutely. That's, that's what game. I meant. The Falcons came out throwing the football. Right. Mariota was sailing the ball everywhere. We, you and I were talking right. about it, right? And they got to the run game in the second half, and, and we're again owning the line of scrimmage and pushing the Steelers back. They should have done that in the beginning. And today, the Steelers should have come out, in my opinion, and started running the ball, established that run, established that mentality that, hey, we might not get first downs in the first quarter, second quarter, but in the third quarter, we're going to wear you down. And they just could never establish the run. I mean, today, um, Najee only had a, a 12 carries for 33 yards. He had 10 carries for 32 in the first half. Then he comes out and only has two carries for one yard in the second half. I know they were playing catch-up, but – that, that, to me, is not enough for your premier back. No, I agree. And it doesn't make the statement that you have been running the ball well, which they had averaged 161 yards in their last four games. So that means the Ravens and Bengals now still atop that division of 9-4. and four. Baltimore in first because they have the tiebreaker. After that, it's Cleveland and Pittsburgh both at 5-8. and eight. When we come back, you're going to hear from Mitch Trubisky. We got T.J. Watt and others. We got that coming up. Plus, a little bit later in this broadcast, we'll take your phone calls about the state of the Steelers and what you think moving forward. And there are a lot of questions involving their offense and their defense. We'll talk about it when we continue. This is the Neighborhood Four Store Extra Point. And you'll see your final score there. Baltimore 16-14, another low-scoring game as the Steelers drop to 5-8. and eight. We're back right after this on KDKA TV. Welcome back to the Neighborhood Ford Store Steelers Extra Point. All right, welcome back. As you take a look at the line score, a pretty active first quarter. The Ravens jumped out to a 10-0 lead today. The Steelers countered with a touchdown drive, which culminated with Najee Harris leaping into the end zone. But 13-7 deficit, nothing in the third quarters. The teams just went back and forth. Uh, missed opportunities by the Steelers, interceptions, whatever else, and the Steelers tried late after they were down 16-7, and all they got was 16-14 and could not stop Baltimore in the end. Here are your J.P. Roofing final stats of this great, uh, game. Chris, so analyze it for me. Yeah, well, the difference to me right there is the running game. We've been talking about that. They control the game, and at the end of the day, it wasn't embarrassing. The clock, they had a, a difference of six minutes in time of possession because of the running game, but what the Steelers did do, what we're not showing here, Bob, they were – Third down, they did a great job against the Ravens on third down, held them to 30.7. But there it is, second line from the bottom on the right, three turnovers, three takeaways by the Ravens. That is the difference in the game because that was a minimum, a minimum, Bob, of nine minimum, points. Right. Right, all of those were 23 yards are in in the Ravens territory. You can't have that. And for me to see that and see that the Steelers were still in it at the end of the game was unbelievable. Because you tell me they have three turnovers, I'm thinking blowout. Yeah, three turnovers plus a blocked field goal. Yeah. Calais Campbell, who does it better than anyone, got in there as well. So that all adds up to an ugly 16 to 14 loss to get to five and eight. Mitch Trubisky on the day, 22 of 30, 276, a touchdown, but. Three interceptions, all critical in scoring areas. Mitch Trubisky spoke after this game. Just uh, wanted to go out there, run the offense. Obviously, it was aggressive, overly aggressive at times, um, which showed up uh, with the turnovers. But um, it was great to be back out there with the guys. I appreciate when everybody battling all four quarters. Uh, a lot of stuff I can do better. Um, but coming off the bench, I just wanted to go in there, try to provide a spark. I thought we did a good job moving the ball. But uh, I got to protect the football, and that's obvious. Which was the, the one to Frymouth looked like 82 was also in the area. Was that supposed to be to Pat? And just to miss it was. Him? It was. They did a good job collisioning Pat on the line of scrimmage, which made his route take a little longer. Um, I stuck with him. Probably could have used a better, um, done a better job with my eyes looking off. Um, but yeah, when it just takes a little longer, two guys in the same spot, um, I'll have to look at it to see exactly what happened. But uh, linebacker made a good play. So. Um, uh, 
I was I was being aggressive at times, overly aggressive. Probably forced that one, um, especially early on the downs and first and second. Um, I got to take care of the football so we can come away with points down there. So that's on me. So Sims was running the right route there. He was in the right spot. It was yeah, he was. Uh, I'll have to look at the depth um, on film um, and if there's any details that go along with it, but. Um, he got, Pat got jammed on the line, so that's why it took a little longer. So uh, within the timing of the play, I just got to check it down or, and not force that. When you first came into the game, a uh, couple passes to George Pickens kind of right away, got a, got a spark going. Um, was there any reason that that just didn't continue as the game went on? Um, I'll have to watch it on film. Uh, I was looking for George, um, certain things they were doing. Um, I, I was just playing within each concept that was called, trying to find completions, trying to move the ball down the field. I thought we did a good job moving it. I got to take care of the football. So I'd uh, love to continue to get Jordan involved. He's a, he's a great talent. We just got to continue to work on the details and, and see which ways we can get him the football for sure. Is it deep when the you, Deontay pre snap? As if you hadn't missed the beat. I, the thing about was there something did they adjust to you maybe in terms of what you were doing, or did you maybe adjust less to them? I mean, every week I'm prepared. I think we were moving the ball, and I think the problem was I was turning it over down the red zone. we got to come away with points, at least field goals. Um, when you give up the football three times to a, a good team and a good defense, they're known for taking the ball away, and uh, I just got to be smarter with, with my decisions and not forcing it down there. Um, so credit to them, and uh, I just try to come in, do my job, and uh, at times I was overly aggressive. I wanted to, I wanted to score in, in the red zone. I wanted to be aggressive. Um, I think uh, looking back at the film, if once we look at it, I think I could be a lot better with my eyes and then uh, be smart and know when to check it down. So a uh, learning experience for sure. Mitch, would you rather be over-aggressive? You said it a couple of times and <coughs> not taking those shots, or is there a happy medium there? There's give and take. There's, def there's definitely a happy medium you need to find. Uh, I think when you have a great kicker like Boz and it's a low-scoring game, um, you, you just got to – be smarter with the football, and then uh, a field goal uh, keeps us in the game or, or helps us win it. So uh, you just got to feel that, and obviously I, I want those throws back. But um, it, it, it's, it, you want to stay aggressive at the same time. We were moving the ball. Part of that was helping um, with, with that aggressive mindset. But the, I, I, got, I got to take care of the football, bottom line. Now that pretty much is the bottom of the line when you throw it away, especially in those costly areas when you're about to score. Points of any sort, you add it all up, minimum yeah. nine could be more, and that's essentially what cost them the game. And he really clarified there yeah. what happened on the interception. He said that Sims was in the right spot, which really helps us there, right? But he says Fryermuth got hung up on his release, and he doesn't know about the depth situation there on that. But then he talked about just taking chances, right? I think that when you play in this game with the Ravens and understanding that these are always very close games, one-score games, that you don't need to take chances. It's better to punt than turning the ball over like that or just kick the field goal. And, uh, and he'll learn that, hopefully, Trubisky in this moment because you can't be turning the ball over against a team as good as the Ravens. Yeah, and the other thing, he said he was looking for George Pickens. If you look at the numbers, apparently he wasn't looking enough. It only says three targets, mm -hmm. three catches. Uh, Deontay Johnson had more. Pat Fryermuth had more. Pickens last week, of course, with, uh, you know, caught on camera, whatever the case may be. I kind of like that uh, as far as it does, as long as it doesn't take it to another level, sure, you sure. know. Um, but the bottom line is he only was targeted three times and he made all three catches. Let's hear from George Pickens after the game today. It's just, a, you know, it's a big game, you know, just traditionally, you know what I mean? So, like, for the tradition, so, you know, a lot of guys wanted, you know, wanted to win just personally. How frustrating is it you know, for you guys to move the ball, make some big jump plays, and then have those three turnovers in the red zone? Uh, I mean, no team want to do that. So uh, I'd probably say very frustrating. But like besides that, uh, all you can do is just go back and keep working. Is that the message for the after this one? Uh, really? Yeah. Really, no. Uh, I ain't really, ne I mean, they ain't really never, uh, like nobody said anything so far, but you know me personally, I know that. Just keep working and you know, you get some wins, you get like you feel me. How much does it help to have Mitch, you know, take some shots to you, take some of those deep shots down the field to move the ball in big chunk plays? Oh, it feel good. Uh, you know, that's kind of what we we preach on how the offense really is. You just gotta execute those plays. But uh, you know, anytime you get an opportunity, you want to seize the moment. Anyone else? When did you realize that Kenny wasn't going to be coming back in? Because I know he was in the concussion protocol, got cleared, went back in, and then went back out. Just what was that like for you guys, you know, the rest of the offense? Uh, to be honest, I didn't even uh, – he kind of, he kind of, like, he kind of did it where, like, no one could even really, like, notice type. So I didn't even know. 
I ain't even know until we got on the field and then Mitch out there. But it was no, that's what I was saying. Like, nobody was like, oh, 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 you see what I mean? Like, he knows exactly what to do, too. George Pickens, three targets, three catches, 78 yards, a long of 42. So you wonder why he's not targeted more in the red zone because he's a big guy he, he, and he shows strong hands every time he gets his hands on the ball. Absolutely. I love the way he catches the ball, right? A lot of receivers will catch the ball with their, with their chest and bring it in like, like, you know, right here. He's catching with his hands and they've got it. They've got a target Pickens in the red zone uh, or the high red zone. And, and what's happening is, is that the ball is being pushed in there to Friar Musa. You saw the two interceptions. He's a target in the red zone, too. So there's only so many balls to go around. And they were going to focus. They were not going to let Pickens. He's the big play receiver for the Steelers, right? Deontay Johnson had a big 37-yard catch today late in the game. But Pickens is your big play receiver. So they weren't going to let that happen. Marcus Peters was watching Pickens. You also had Marlon. They were switching up there. The reality is, is that the ball just can't get to all those players every, I mean, on every single red zone play. No, uh, but he had no targets in that uh, red zone area. He'd like to see more of that. Friar Muth gets a lot of it, well deserved, but they got to, and those guys are still young players. I'm sure this thing will evolve as time goes on, but the Steelers lose the game 16 14 to fall to five and eight. Next up, Carolina. We have more locker room interviews coming up. And we'll talk about a look down the road, what's left in this season, and you know, the Steelers are really in a bad situation with regard to trying to get back in this thing. They have some things to develop. 16-14, the run game was the difference, as was a turnover differential of minus three. You don't win many games like that, but they were in a position to win it. Despite all those turnovers, we'll come back with more locker room reaction right after this. Welcome back to the neighborhood Ford store Steelers Extra Point. Bob Pompiani, along with Chris Oak, we're here until 6 o'clock. Our number one Cochran player of the game goes to Minka Fitzpatrick. He was the leading tackler today. In fact, the top two tacklers were both safeties, Fitzpatrick and Terrell Edmonds. Minka spoke after the game. Let's take you inside the locker room. Yeah, disappointing, frustrating, because you knew it was coming. Yeah, it did. When you know a team uh, likes to run the ball and you can't stop it, um, yeah, it is, it is frustrating. What, what do you think happened there? Um, I got to watch the film. You know, stuff is happening so fast and in front of you. You don't get to see exactly what it is. And I don't want to say something that it wasn't. So we just got to go back, watch the film as a team. How much did today kind of feel like a little bit of a missed opportunity for you guys as a team? I think it was a huge missed opportunity for us. I think, um, you know, we think we, we could have beat them. Um, we knew what they were going to do. We knew that we had to stop the run. We knew how to uh, take take uh, deep balls off of us. And, you know, we didn't do one of those three things. And, uh, and they won the game. So, um, you know, like I said, it's, it's, it's a huge, huge missed opportunity for us. No, no. You talking about you talking about on our team or yeah, both quarters. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, nah, it's, it's not too much. We still got to do our job. You know what I'm saying? Mitch is, Mitch is a great quarterback. We have faith in him. Uh, so not too much changes in our approach, our game plan. Honestly, our approach is just to get the ball to him as much as we can, um, and, and that's it. We just got to keep doing it. You know what I'm saying? We just got to keep doing it. Um, you know, 17 is, is still, you know, a lot. You know what I'm saying? I think that we could hold them to less. I think we could have held this team to less points than what we did today. Um, you know, no matter what the offense is doing, we just got to keep doing our job. Megan Fitzpatrick certainly did his job. 11 tackles. He applied the hit on Tyler Huntley, which originally drew a flag, and I'm glad they picked it up. Me too. Because it wasn't <laughs> roughing. It was, and there was also one that was called roughing on Baltimore yeah. later, and I don't think that was roughing yeah, either. It's there football. Was it is football, right? Just take some football life out of them. That's what I love about football. You come up and you hit people. That's what football is all about. I just remember Coach Cower always saying, this game's not for everyone. This game's violent. And I know that's kind of stepped back a little bit since Coach Cower was coaching for the Steelers, but that's always been my mentality. And I loved that hit by Mika that he put on Huntley. It was clean. It wasn't dirty. You had Montrevious Adams hanging on his legs, and here he comes to clean it up. And, and unfortunately, it ended up in a concussion. But football, that's the way it's meant to be playing, Bob. Leading tacklers, we mentioned Minka Fitzpatrick, but again, after him, it was Terrell Edmonds, who totaled nine. Miles Jack and Devin Bush, I thought, even though those totals say seven and six respectively, I thought they were not very effective at all when compared to the two inside backers of Baltimore. Quite frankly, Patrick Queen and Roquan Smith. 
dominated this game. Well, there's no question, right? The two first rounders in Roquan Smith and Patrick Queen, I mean, that's what you want to see Devin Bush playing like and wasn't even close to play for Miles Jack and Devin Bush. And when you have your safeties as your leading tacklers, to me, that's a problem, right? You want your linebackers to be your first hitters, want to be your leading tacklers. And too many times today, we saw them on skates, meaning they were getting knocked back or they were getting knocked down. And that was part of the reason, a big reason why they could not stop the running game because largely Miles Jack and Devin Bush were ineffective. Yeah, and then it goes to the next layer after that, which is normally the safeties, and you make them tacklers. I thought T.J. Watt, it's interesting, that play right there, he yeah. made a nice tackle on Huntley, but you can tell he was really favoring his left arm. He really was, and he comes out there, and he's reaching right with his left arm, and he's not really using his right arm. I've noticed that a lot in the last couple of weeks, and that could be hindering him a little bit, but I think there's a lot going on, right. not just his pec. He's got the ribs. He's got the knee. There's so many things, and I've talked about this before, Bob. It's not just the injury. It's the emotional toll that it takes. I mean, mm -hmm. you come out – getting ready for practice, and then winding down after practice, icing and doing all that treatment and doing treatment for a game. It's tiring. It's exhausting, and it really tests your, tests your mental toughness. And so that could be part of the problem, too, is just that wearing down of these injuries throughout the season. Yeah, and quite frankly, he's out there playing, but he's not close to being the normal T.J. Watt, but you still have to give him the respect he deserves if you're Baltimore or any other team. Watt spoke after the game. Let's take you inside the locker room. Sometimes is it sort of moralizing in the sense that you guys are playing hard and you have turnovers not in the red zone, just on the Baltimore side? And do you guys get together and just kind of continue to keep the morale up, just trying to stop them continuously? And were you just worn down at the end of the game? I mean, it's football. Um, as a defense, we take the field when we need to. Uh, regardless of what the situation is, we need to hold them to uh, as few points as we possibly can. And um, I don't think we got worn down. I think it was just a factor of not executing uh, when we knew uh, everybody in the stadium knew what they were going to do, and that was run the ball. TJ Mike was talking about not coming up with the big stops and the waiting moments. I mean, obviously, that was the one right before the two minute warning there, but also were you looking to get a safety or something when you had them back, when they were backed up right against the one? Was that also another one? Yeah, I mean, look back at the film, there's tons of opportunities. I mean, that's always how it is. You never make enough plays. Um, that's something that we're going to have to look at, but clearly we didn't do enough uh, specifically from a defensive side of things uh, to put us in position to help win the game. What did you see happen on the, the big run that Dobbins got in the first half? I don't know. I'm going to have to take a look at it. Anything else? What is this? I mean, you guys have, have kind of held on to that feeling that you still had a chance to get back into this. What, what is this loss due to that feeling right now? Got to watch the film, learn from it, and go next week. How did you hold up physically, TJ? How were the ribs this time around? Uh, it's just, uh, it doesn't matter at this point. Thanks, guys. Interesting, T.J. Watt there said that he doesn't believe his team wore down. Mike Tomlin had a different assertion there. He yeah. said late in the, maybe as we're talking about later in the game, but in the first half, it wasn't a case of being worn down. It was a case of being outplayed, quite frankly. Oh, really? And it was after that punt that we talked about with Presley mm -hmm. Harvey. They went down 48-yard run, four, or 44-yard run, four-yard run for a total of 48 yards. That's where it got started. But in the first half, the first half, when you're fresh, the Ravens ran for 20 carries for 127 yards at 6.4 yard on average. Now, you, you, you add in that 44 yard run, that really brings up that average. But the second half, they ended up with 42 for 215. Uh, and so they got, you know, really, they just were getting on the run game from the very beginning and establishing the, the, the mentality that we're going to own this line of scrimmage, and they did. Yeah, and again, the outside linebackers, because it's a run game, you don't see many sack totals. There weren't a lot of that in this game. It was largely a run first thing by Baltimore, which means your outside linebackers don't get the stats. Alex yeah. Highsmith did not have a statistically good day. Your thoughts about his performance? Uh, he, he was non-existent in this game. Three tackles, and you didn't hear his name. And a lot of what he does, he plays well in the run game, but a lot of what he does is putting pressure on the quarterback. But there just weren't a lot of passes today. 11 passes for 104 yards yep. from the Ravens. Just not enough opportunities, and that's coming off a lot of play action or getting the ball out quick. Um, so it was a tough day for Alex Heisman at the office, but we know that he, his arrow is pointing up in terms of as a player. Let's hear from number 56 in the locker room right now. You know, they were able to run the ball to him a lot, and so um, you know we weren't able to, to execute, but we knew the knew it was going his way. It's just we weren't able to get off. What just made it hard to stop him overall in the run today? It was more physical enough, and uh, you know the reason we've been a successful run defense all year is because um, you know, we've been playing physical, and we just didn't did do that enough at the end of the game. 
You know, any loss is a missed opportunity, um, and especially when you're playing the AFC North ball, um, playing the Ravens, the big rival. And, um, you know, we, we had it. It's just, like I said, we weren't able to get out the field in um, those last couple of drives, and so, you know, it's definitely frustrating. Is it simply, Chris, a matter of being just more physical or the scheme that Baltimore uses is very effective? It seems week in and yeah. week out because everybody knows they're around first team, and yet they still, at the end of the year, are one of, if not the best running team in the NFL. What is it about them? Well, there's no question that their identity is to be a very physical football team, Bob, and they really came after and got after the Steelers' defensive line. And it happened on the other side, too, of the ball. Their defensive line got after the Steelers' offensive line. They didn't have – what the Steelers today had 20 carries for 65 yards, very, very little. But schematically, they, they really got after the, the Steelers as well. Coach Mitchell, the D-line coach for the Steelers, would always say that football is a game of numbers and a game of angles. And they kept beating the Steelers with angles. They would block down on the front side and pull the backside guard and tackle on the counter play. And the linebackers could not get over the top. And the D-linemen couldn't cross face and get down. And there were big gashes in those counter plays that made it tough for the Steelers to stop the run. So to me, it was also schematically they were beating the Steelers with angles in the run game as well. Yeah, that one play that comes to mind is the 44-yarder by J.K. Dobbins right after the 17-yard punt by Harvin. It was a huge hole. It was Cam Hayward being double teamed. And then you had Devin Bush uh, being wiped out of the play. So I guess my question to you would be, wh whose responsibility is it to make that whole go away, or is it both? Well, I, I, if you ask Cam, Cam will say largely it's because of him. When you get that double team, you got to feel that guard coming down on you, and you've got to anchor on that center, fight into the double team, and when that guard comes off onto the linebacker, you've got to shoot back into that A-gap. And Cam got bumped out of there, made the hole big. Devin Bush didn't help as he came and he filled that hole, that B-gap. He got pushed out as well, widening that gap a little more. So both of them got to be better, but I would believe that Cam would say, if he asked her that question, he's got to be better on that double team. All right, it was 44 yards set up, a touchdown by Dobbins, the first of the game. We have more to talk about. We will, and we'll have more interviews coming up, plus your phone calls a little later in the program, so don't go away. This is your neighborhood Ford store. Extra point following a 16-14 Steelers loss to the Ravens that drops their record of 5-8. and eight. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the neighborhood Ford store Steelers Extra Point. All right, welcome back. Here is your line score from the game. Justin Tucker, 42-yard field goal. The guy never misses. That gave him a 3 nothing lead. Then the bad pound by Harvin led to a short field. Dobbins, four-yard score after his 44-yard run. 10-zip. Najee Harris culminated a drive that Mitch Trubisky moved right down the field. It was 10-7. They had some momentum on their side. But then an interception. It turned into a 35-yard field goal the other way for Tucker. Another one after that, 16-7. The Steelers got a late score, and they had a chance to get the ball back, but they simply could not stop Baltimore as they ran the ball and ran the clock. And that was that, 16-14, your final score. Mason Cole is the guy who plays on that offensive line, and he's largely been very effective this year, especially the last four games. Not so much today. Let's find out what he had to say in the locker room after the loss. Yeah, we knew he was, we knew he was getting checked on, and then he came back in. Um, and the next drive, they told us Mitch was going, so that's, that's when we found out. Do you guys notice any concussion symptoms? Sometimes it's players alerting coaches. No, that's, that's about right. my pay grade. Mason, you guys move the ball a lot. Is it more frustrating when you feel like you have something going repeatedly and you just can't finish? Yeah, 100%. Um, like I said, I, we probably left nine, nine points out there today, and it's a difference in the game um, if, we get, if we get any of those, any of those points. So... Um, Stinks, man. This one hurts. Uh, that's a great question. I just, I'm not sure. I think uh, you know, we we tried to run the ball early in the second half, and um, we were kind of putting putting a lot of guys in the box, and we were having to throw our POs, and um, we just we just couldn't get a whole a whole lot going, and, and just kind of resorted to the to the pass game, and. Um, I thought it was actually working for the most part. We just we just couldn't get it done at the end. I mean, how much this, this one stings, this one hurts. I mean, it's pretty classic, low-scoring Steelers-Ravens. Is that part of, like, the nature of this game is when you guys often win? Yeah. This this? Yeah, you know, this way, uh, playing these guys, it hurts. Uh, as you go later in the season, everyone hurts a little more. Um, when you knew you had chances out there, chances to win the game, it, it, it hurts more. It's just... Uh, it hurts. It's just 
but it's, it's part of the game. We're going to have to uh, pick ourselves up and get back to work and, and try to get the next four. You guys. Mason Cole and that offensive line have pretty much been together all season long. You know, no injuries to report of, which is good. Uh, Dan Moore had a, another hole. It seems like every game goes by, but he doesn't, you know, he seems to get better yeah. uh, as the game moves on. But still, those holding calls are terrible calls. What's your overall assessment? Of, I mean, they got dominated today, but they overall did. they've done a pretty good job in the last several weeks. I would have liked to have seen them come out, Bob, and try to run the ball, establish the run. Today it seemed like they wanted to go towards the pass a little bit more, and that – has not been the recipe for Steeler wins in the second half of the season after the bye week. The last four weeks, they've had I mean, one of the top five rushing offenses in the NFL. They came out today, and really, they only had 20 rushes, 22 passes. Now, people are going to say, well, they were behind. They were only behind by six points the whole game. They Don't were get never, away from never the game out plan. of the game. No, they not weren't out of the game. game. They're behind, but it wasn't like they needed to go to the air attack. To me, it seemed like when Trubisky came in the game, they went away from establishing the run and really were throwing the ball, and he was highly effective except when he got inside the 23-yard line and that one bomb he threw for an interception. But the reality is, to me, they got away from their identity, what made them good the last four weeks, winning three of the last four. Yeah, that, that deep ball that was intercepted by Williams to the Ravens, I, I didn't know why they had to do that. There was too I much think coverage. I he just chucked it up. I think he chucked it up. Yeah, but that's dangerous. Yep. And I didn't understand, by the way, on that play, I did not understand, and Gene's territory was on. I respect Gene. He knows everything about it. But I thought it was a touchback because he caught the ball on the one-yard line, and they marked it at the one-yard line. I thought it was, okay, the momentum took you in. Whatever the case, we also found out some things today that I never heard of. Joint possession. <laughs> what is <laughs> joint possession? And we also have joint penalties. Listen, I played I mean, in the NFL for 11 years. <laughs> I've been covering this now since I retired 10 years ago. 21 years. I've never heard of joint possession. And what else? We also had some. We had another joint yeah, I wrote down joint, here. Uh, um, Interference. Yeah, oh yeah, we had we had Offensive joint pass interference, and defensive right? pass interference it on the same two guys. Joints, right? It was the day of joints. I don't understand that. Uh, no, but Pat Fryermuth is a guy who uh, is another guy taking a step forward. Again, today he had some big plays, and if, if I'm not mistaken, both of the intended yep. passes by Trubisky in the middle of the field were intended for him. Was he trying right. to force it? He said he was being aggressive. Well, I think the one he thought he can get it up over Patrick Queen and just didn't get enough uh, air on that ball. The other one, again, was just who knows. They'll have to watch the film and see what happened with Sims and Fryermuth being in the same area. But the reality is that's who you want to go to. He's your sure-handed guy, especially in the red zone. And um, it you know, looked to me like the, a couple of those were forced. He could have checked them down. Or like I said earlier, Bob, when you're playing the Ravens, sometimes you're better off just throwing it away and, and, or, or checking it down and kicking the ball and taking the points because right. these are always one-score games, and you're going to need those three points. Especially with the third-team quarterback in the game and Anthony yeah. Brown, and they really were not going to throw the ball at all, so you knew that. Uh, yeah, be safer with that. And that's one thing Kenny Pickett has done well over the last four games. Didn't turn over, made smarter decisions there. Whatever the case may be, Trubisky can't make those plays. Another guy, though, who is taking more of a role is Steven Sims. He was targeted four times. He had four catches on offense. In addition to his receiving, uh, you know, he's, he's a guy on punt returns route. Right now he's taking over that job from Gunnar Osheski. He had some words after the game as well. Let's hear what he had to say. It's very frustrating. Um, we lose by two. Um, block field goal, three red zone trips, they get a pick, or two red zone trips, they get a pick. You know, it's just small little things like that, you know, change the, the, the outcome of the game. And, and it would have been a complete different game if we just get the field goal back. Were you or Pat the intended target on that first one? Uh, Pat was. Um, Pat was the target. I kind of went behind the defender, should have went in front of him to open the lane for Pat. Um, I kind of put that one on myself. You know, when you play an AFC North team like this and you lose such a close battle, what what does it do to the, to this locker room? Um, for me, it's like we get another opportunity to see him again. Um, but, you know, it's, it's still not over. Um, we just got to keep fighting. It, it pisses you off, though. That's mainly what it does, um, especially when you lose to the Ravens like this. Um, we had all the opportunities in the world to beat them, and we didn't We didn't execute. didn't seem like you guys kept a beat out there when, when Trubisky came in for Pickett, um, just the interceptions. Yeah, that's really it. Um, Mitch came out there, you know, he's giving us a chance, throwing 50-50 balls, putting his trust in us. So, you know, that's something that we're, we're not upset with him or blase, blase. No, we we, we riding with Mitch. Um, we're behind him 100%. He was giving us opportunity to make plays. Um, it just didn't turn out that way today. Still the thought in here is, that, hey, you guys still have a chance. The door's still slightly open. I mean, I guess I, I know it's probably a whole lot will have to happen for us, but um, you know we can't. We're not. I'm not really worried about giving up or anything like that. No, I don't think that's this team. Now that's Rich Walsh in the locker room with Steven Stims, who now goes against what we heard from Mr. Trubisky, who seemed to clear. <laughs> it's Sims. going back and forth. Sims took the blame. That's what you originally yeah. thought. Uh, 
it's hard to tell. On, on so it on wasn't a bad route. He came. He said he came behind Roquan Smith, rather in front of Roquan Smith, which messed right. with the depth, right? And he would have been closer to the line of scrimmage. Would have been probably allowed Trubisky to get the ball over the top of Roquan and Steve Smith and get the ball to Fryermuth. So that's the story now. But you know what? What I love about Trubisky, he's going to take the blame. That's a professional, right? You take the blame no matter what and go back and watch it on film because he did say he'd watch it on film. And uh, whatever it is, it's tough to turn the ball over twice inside the 23-yard line and get a, a field goal blocked in a game this close. I know coverage and scheme plays a lot into this, but should Steve Sims have more targets than George Pickens? I really like Steve Sims. I think he's a monster out there. Last week, they used him in the run game. Three carries for 19 yards last week, over six yards a carry on those jet sweeps. And then today, he went four for 30 on four targets, caught every single ball thrown his way. He's shown that he's – you saw the one play, Bob, where he caught the ball, and I think it was Marlon Humphreys, or maybe it was the, um, the other – the number one draft pick out of Notre Dame. He thought he was going to turn to the sideline, but he cut inside and went for a first down. So you're seeing him grow and develop. And I think he's carving out a nice place for him on the Steelers' offense. But should he have more targets than George Pickens? No. Okay. But George Thank Pickens is more of the big time. <laughs> George Pickens, I want to see them throw the ball to him more down, down, so you know, do down I. the field. He is really good with his hands. I love the way he catches that ball. We're going to take a break here, come back with more. You're watching Extra Point Show on KDKA, and we'll follow it up with the number one co- – or actually, no, it's the Ireland Contracting Nightly Sports Call. And then tonight at 11.35, we'll be on time with the number one Cochrane Sports Showdown. 16-14, your final score. Got a lot of programming for you right here on KDKA, and we return right after this. Welcome back to the Neighborhood Ford Store Steelers Extra Point. All right, welcome back. Bob Pompiani, Chris Hoke with you. And this is your NFL scoreboard. Some of the games that are already completed today. The Bengals uh, avenged a loss earlier this year to the Browns. 23-10 they win that game. So they're now 9-4 tied with the Ravens, but they lose that tiebreaker so far. Bills, Jets, that one goes to Buffalo. Ten wins on the year for the Bills, the Jets in the final wild card, uh, wild card spot. They dropped to 7-6. and six. And the Eagles, and boy, I'll tell you what. They just keep on rolling. One loss. The Giants are coming back down to earth. 48-22, that one in MetLife Stadium. So uh, Jalen Hurts, Miles Sanders, and all these guys really going at it. The AFC North, again, it's a two, um, two-horse two race right now. The Ravens and Bengals trying to figure out who's going to win. Right now, the Ravens are on top. They have a big meeting later in the year. The Browns and Steelers, they play on the final game of the season. In the meantime, Cam Hayward. Always up front uh, after games. He spoke in the locker room. Let's see his drop on some of that conversation. So, I mean, he didn't get blockers enough to tackle. Um, you know, um, down a quarterback. Um, you know, you're not going to continue to put quarterbacks under duress. They're just going to run the ball. Um, and they had a lot of success today. How much of a missed opportunity did today feel like for you guys? Uh, I'll have to think about it a lot. But, uh, you know, we. Uh, it's a missed opportunity because we didn't take advantage of it. Um, you know, we have to um, just too many mistakes. Um, you know, especially late in the year. Um, just you know, you know, commend them. They did their job. They got the job done um, on defense. They got turnovers. Uh, got a big block by Calais Campbell, and then on offense, uh, they sustained drives. Um, got field goals when they needed, and got one touchdown. Okay, did you guys get? Specifically, what you were thinking you'd get on those last three runs? Yeah, <laughs> and that's the uh, the head scratcher because you know um, you know everything's downhill. You should be knowing where it's going by that point, and um, to not get off the field uh, and just give our offense one more chance that that's things the most. What do you say to your guys after this one? You guys move forward here? Say less. Uh, come ready for film tomorrow, and you know. I screwed up on a, a numerous amount of plays, uh, you know, uh, um, trying to do too much, and um, you know, that's that's what we all did. And um, as a leader, I got to take more account for it. That seems to be something we've heard a lot. Guys trying to do too much. That's what happens in these games, right? When you have players, all pro players like Cam Hayward, like Mika Fitzpatrick, when you go out in a game, trust is so important on a defense, on an offense, trusting your brother next to you. And when you feel like, hey, if I don't make this play, it might not get made. And then you start trying to do too much. And then when you try to do too much, you're not doing your job and you're not doing the other person's job you're trying to cover for. And that's when the defense breaks down. And that's the frustrating thing you've seen over the season is, is, is 
players like a Cam Hayward trying to do too much to cover for somebody else, and then he puts himself in a bad position. And that really, Bob, like you said, that's been the story of this season for the Steelers. You've seen it with Minka at times where Minka's trying to – you could tell he's trying to cover for his, his, his buddy on the defense, and he doesn't cover his own position, and big plays that happen early in the season. Yeah. You also have to credit Baltimore, too. Ronnie Stanley's one of the best uh, left yeah. tackles in the game, and – Alex Highsmith, is, that's his assignment. It's tough to do because that guy's pretty good at what he does, and their offensive line in general is one of the better ones in the NFL. Right now it's time to take a look at our neighborhood four-tour road ahead. And it's a bumpy one because, quite frankly, the Steelers got to run the table here and then hope, I think. You got Carolina coming at you. That's next week at 1 o'clock. That's down there. It's a down team. Then Vegas here on Christmas Eve, the Immaculate Reception. Uh, and a big ceremony going off of that one. But, the, you know, they can run the ball. Josh Jacobs is a guy who can yeah. run the ball. And then Baltimore, Cleveland, and. And that's the problem. We're looking at this right now. I mean, the Carolina Panthers, they're not a team that keeps you up at night. But they do average 4.4 yards a carry. You go to the, you know, the, the Las Vegas Raiders, they have Josh Jacobs. He's averaging 5.1 yards a carry. The Ravens, we saw him today. Then you got Nick Chubb. So the, got, the Steelers exactly. got to fix this because right now they're giving up a lot of yardage in the run game. And if they don't fix it, you're going to see these teams come out and run heavy offensive personnel and the Steelers are going to have to stop it. Right. There's absolutely nothing else you would expect if you're Mike Tomlin and that defensive coaching yep. staff. These teams are going to do it and they do it all pretty well. So that's going to be the challenge moving forward. We thank you for joining us here on your neighborhood Ford store extra point coming up. We have a special Steelers edition of the Ireland contracting nightly sports call, which we do nightly at 1035 on Pittsburgh CW. We'll take your phone calls. We'll get your thoughts all right here after the Steelers lose to the Ravens 16 14 your final score back with your calls and opinions next. We're right here live on KDKA TV.